Thank you for joining us here today. Uh, today, I'm going to be talking about choosing the right DG shape mill for you. So we're going to be talking about some of the key differences between these machines. And really what it's going to boil down to is what which workflows are you trying to produce? Um, that'll pretty much point you down the path of which one of these devices is right for you. So let's go ahead and talk about some of the uh, new features with some of our equipment, some of our new equipment and some of our older equipment and uh, how they can help your production. So what we're going to be covering today is going to be the DWX53DC, which is our newest milling solution. Uh, we're going to be talking about the 52D plus as well as the 42W plus. And we're going to talk about the differences between the 52D and the 52D plus as well as the 42W and the 42W plus. Now, you may notice on this screen that you do see an asterisk next to the 52DCI. Uh, the reason for that, we're not going to be covering it in detail today, and that is to let you know it's because the DCI is currently on a production hold, so we likely won't see that device available here in the U.S. again for roughly four to six months. To catch up uh, all of our partners on 52D Plus and 42W Plus models, the demand for them, we shifted production on to focus on those two. So the DCI is not going away. If you need one or think that you might need one in the near future, we will have them back soon. But as of today, uh, that solution is not currently available in our inventory. But if you're patient enough, uh, you can certainly wait and pick one up. Or if you are in demand of that disc changer option, the 53 DC would be a fantastic option for you as well. Okay. But the uh, beloved 52 DC is not gone. Uh, you will see it again and it will be back. So let's jump right into the first mill, which is going to be the DWX 52 D plus. The 52 D plus is very similar to the 52 D, the original 52 D. The plus model has a new spindle in it. That spindle has uh, almost two times the grip force in the collet to the tool. So when we mill harder materials, there's a possibility of tool slippage. By increasing the grip force to the tool from the collet, uh, we eliminate that possibility, allowing us to change strategies, be a little more aggressive. So uh, key benefit there with the 52D Plus is that new spindle version, okay? Um, the spindle itself, the collet area of the machine is built with more durable materials. So it's going to have a longer lifespan, uh, be able to take a little bit more abuse when you're milling those harder materials like PMMA, acrylic, uh, peak, pectin, trilor, those types of solutions. The 52D is still a five axis mill, so nothing really changes there. Still holds 15 tools uh, in the tool changer itself. One of the reasons people really like the 52D, the 52D plus, is the C-clamp, which offers 90 degree milling features. So that's going to allow, uh, like in the image here on the bottom uh, right, you, when you have a larger case, you're going to be able to place the anterior region in that clamp. So it will mill away the edge of that puck and you'll have full access to the anterior, the interproximal regions, and also tissue if uh, you're doing it all on four case. So uh, folks who do those all on four cases really love the C-clamp feature. Uh, that would be activated through the CAM software that you're utilizing, okay? Uh, and one of the customer's favorite things about our equipment is the use of replaceable spindle. There's really not many, if any, companies out there who will allow you to work on your own machine when it's under warranty to swap out your new spindle. We will allow you to do that. Uh, there is a 20-minute video available for you through our YouTube channel, which takes you step-by-step -step and very simply breaks down that replacement process. Anybody who can turn an Allen key can go through the replacement uh, of their own spindle on our devices, dry devices. Uh, who would this mill be perfect for? A smaller lab with a lower volume of production. Low, you know, can be anywhere from 30 to 50 to 60 units. Uh, as long as you have somebody there on site feeding pucks into this machine, this would be a great option for you, okay? Um, it could also be a boutique-style laboratory that's specializing in all-on-four restorations and that C-clamp feature. Uh, startup labs. This is a great investment for a lab that's just starting out because it's going to give you the best ROI. 
It's going to be our uh, most affordable mill, which means you're going to be able to pay it off quicker and realize profit. So we uh, hear reports from most users that are using the machines mostly for all on four cases that they realize their ROI in anywhere from two to three months. So that's incredibly fast. Uh, again, as I mentioned before, anybody focused on all on four production, this would be a great option for you because of that C-clamp 90 degree feature. Uh, that C-clamp feature also unlocks capabilities for large full arch cases, as you can see in the images that I'm showing here. Uh, some arches are simply just too wide to fit inside the standard style adapters. So when you come across a case like this, you can place it in the C-clamp feature and you would be able to allow that border of your design file in the uh, material block to protrude out in the open space of the C-clamp. So it's going to give you full detail uh, in the anterior region for anterior work or allow you to mill larger, broader arches uh, by allowing that border to protrude out of the disc itself. Okay, so multi-purpose function there. And I like to provide a couple of tips for everybody when, whenever I present on a mill on how to be more efficient. So one thing that you should consider is tactical nesting. So what that means is how can you get a higher yield out of your uh, material blocks? Higher yield means you're gonna make, put more restorations in each puck, making more money per puck. So spending a little bit of time, whether it's two, three minutes per job, changing the rotation or changing the fit or how borders intersect uh, with your uh, different restorations and how you're placing support pins can generate a higher yield for you. The most I've ever seen fit into one puck was 42 units. So that's a fantastic yield out of, out of one zirconia block. Now, granted, most of those were anterior uh, interior crowns, so they were smaller, but that's still a significant uh, significant amount of crowns produced out of one puck itself. Uh, smaller milling jobs. The tip uh, about smaller milling jobs is they're not necessarily more productive. For every small job, and what I mean by small job is one or two crowns per calculation, it's actually going to rob you of time. You're calculating, you're placing the puck in the machine, you're doing puck changes, depending on the machine, you're doing tool changes. So as you add more restorations to your job, it's going to reduce the amount of tool changes back and forth, ultimately making your milling jobs slightly faster. So the sweet spot for this, for somebody who might be a, a smaller production, five or six crowns per job would be much more efficient than milling one or two crowns at a time in your puck. Um, proper puck selection. This is something that I, I see pretty frequently. People do love the convenience of purchasing um, only a few thicknesses of puck. I get the convenience. It's easier to order, easier to keep inventory. But when you're placing restorations that are 12 to 14 millimeters in an 18 or 20 millimeter puck out of sheer convenience, you're wasting time. The tools are cutting unnecessary material. You're wasting tool life. You're also wasting spindle life. So though it may hurt the pocketbook initially when you're placing uh, a stock order of your zirconia, uh, having a variety of pucks will serve you better over the long run than having a smaller inventory of very large pucks. So just a couple of quick tips there. All of these can save you money uh, and increase your ROI. Ian, is it okay if we launch our first question? Absolutely, go ahead before I start with the 42. Okay, so the first one is, which material would you most like to do in your DG shape mill? You wouldn't mind answering. Yeah, if you guys could give us an answer here. Um, this is helpful for us for you to give, to give us this information as we go through this. We can take this back and take a look at how we're developing strategies, tooling, and find out what is most important to the customer base. So you giving us this info is uh, incredibly helpful.
you want me to continue on here? Or? Yeah, please do. I'm going to end the poll now because everybody okay. seemed to have answered. So that's great. Perfect. So DWX 42W plus the newer model from the regular DWX 42W. Still plenty of 42Ws, the standard model out there. Uh, many of them uh, are still out there working. But the difference with this machine, just like the 52D plus, is the new spindle model. So we've added some new workflows in the bullet point below. We've added uh, milling capabilities of materials which require no firing. Before, the materials that were most common in the 42 were the uh, ceramic impregnated resins, something like a Vita Namic, and also uh, glass ceramic blocks. So now companies have come out with new materials which require no firing, which means it comes out of the mill, you cut off the support, and you're taking it right to polish right before you place. So these materials are uh, Haas Bios uh, Amber Mill Direct, would be a no fire lithium disilicate material with great aesthetics, as well as Vatex Perfect SS, which is FS, which is a no fire uh, zirconium. So it's a solid shade or a multi layer block. It's a really nice material. These materials are harder. So to compensate for uh, the wear that the original spindle would take, we've now upgraded to the new model of spindle in the 42W. One of the features of that new spindle is an added uh, water jet. So we went from two to three uh, water jets now, applying more water, more coolant, more lubricant to the tool and the block itself to protect the tool, protect the material from being damaged or broken, uh, as well as that additional coolant is going to extend the life of your tooling. So you could see uh, potentially a 20 to 30% increase in lifespan of your tools with this new version of spindle. Uh, one of the other features is a bigger, heavier duty collet. So again, these internal parts, just like the, the new spindle in the 52D plus, more durable, uh, heavier duty to take the wear and tear of harder materials like this. So um, no fire, you know, you might find this convenient where you're not having to fire things or put them through crystallization cycles. I know my family worked, uh, our lab was very in very close proximity to a dentist's office right next door. At one time it was right above and it allows you to offer capabilities like same date crown to a practice that might be in close proximity to you. So if somebody's at the end of the block, you know, they send you their file, you design it an hour later, it's very likely you could be delivering a same day restoration to one of your closer accounts. The 42W Plus also offers the AK1 kit, just like the regular 42W. Those platforms that can be used on that fixture are going to be DES, NT Trading, Geomedi, and Medentico. Okay. As always, the uh, CAM software is included with the 42W purchase, so there would be uh, no add-on for that CAM software. And we do pair that with Millbox. Okay. So now a couple of tips. Like I said, I like to try to help you guys out with some tips when we do these. So some tips for success with your 42W+. Plus. So number one, this is the most common issue we see come across to our service team when we have a new user with a 42W. Uh, understanding the tooling options, we have two different types of tool for blocks. That's going to be the ZGB, which is a coarse grit tool. And we have a ZGB2, which is a high quality tool with a finer grit diamond. The coarser diamond, which is of standard quality, milling finish result, uh, is able to mill slightly faster because it has a larger grit. It's taking bigger passes of material away from the block itself, creating your restoration. The high quality being a finer grit is going to give you sharper margins, better finish, better anatomy, overall better detail, but because the, the diamond coating is finer, it's not going to take as big of bites of material. So the time difference for a standard crown and that same design milled with the high quality can be anywhere from five to eight minutes, depending on the size of the restoration. So that's something to keep in account. But understanding your tooling options is important because if you choose the operation or the strategy for the standard quality and you insert the high quality burrs into the machine, you're going to have 
potentially tool breakage, you're going to have tool wear and most likely material breakage. So when you're going through the training process uh, or onboarding of a new 42W Plus, it's important to ask all the questions to understand completely how you should be navigating that CAM software, okay? Uh, confirming your strategy to your material choice. Because some because the tools are coarse and fine, some materials can only be cut with a certain type of tool. So it's smart if you choose a new material. If you do not see that material option available under the tool you're intending to use, you should contact your dealer support team, contact us at DG Shape or your CAM software provider to find out which option would be best for you. You may be using the wrong tool, which could ultimately result in failure, okay? Choosing the correct object types. So up on the screen, I have two different options here. We have crown, which is like a full contour posterior crown. And we also have the uh, crown prep, greater than two millimeter, less than two millimeters, sorry. And understanding the difference between those is very important to the success that you're going to have with the machine. So this option here, the crown prep option, should be chosen any time that you're milling anything that's a bicuspid or forward in the mouth. So any anterior restorations or bicuspids, you should utilize this choice. It's going to use a different strategy. Uh, the different strategy is going to choose a different tool for the cavity, which would be smaller, and ultimately allow for coolant to reach the tool tip to remove material. If we use the largest tool to mill out that cavity, we would be blocking the coolant from reaching the tool tip and ultimately burning out the tip of the tool, which would then break your material block. So again, anything by cuspid or forward in the mouth, we strongly recommend you use crown prep option. Anything posterior, that's a full contour crown, crown option should be chosen, okay? Um, a little maintenance tip for the 42W, something that we're finding help people quite a bit based off of cases we have come in. Uh, you're going to be changing your coolant and cleaning your filters roughly every 20 hours of use, which is about 40 to 45 crowns. Uh, we recommend every three, I would suggest once a month, taking your filters out of your coolant tank, cleaning out the tank itself, making sure there's no residue left inside of it filling it with lukewarm water, not hot, but lukewarm water, placing the tank back in with no filters and running a coolant flow check for five minutes. The warm water distribution through the lines is going to eliminate any buildup or debris and push that back through the tank. So on a monthly basis, it'd be good maintenance practice for you to go ahead and do that warm water flush through your tank system. Sorry about that. Last but not least is our newest mill, the DWX 53DC. Uh, if you've been to any of the dental shows over the past year, I believe we showed it for the first time at LMT last year uh, and at every show since. Um, it's our newest, latest, greatest. It utilizes a six disc changer that operates differently from the DCI. It's a lift motor moving up and down uh, and not up, down, left, right. That change has reduced milling times by roughly five minutes, just due to the speed at which the, the disc is changed into the milling chamber. So that's a time savings there, just based off of the, uh, the disc change. Uh, this machine has its very own spindle. It does not have the same spindle as the 52 DCI or the 52 D or even the plus models. Uh, the 53 spindle is something unique to itself. It is our biggest spindle yet. It's going to have three times the grip force, which is more significant than the new 52D+, Plus, which is going to allow us to develop different tools, more aggressive strategies, um, and really make this machine more productive. So that's something we're actively working on with partners now. We've, uh, back in, I would say, early Q2, we implemented a new three millimeter strategy with a single flute tool, which we're going to talk about here in coming slides. Uh, which has brought milling of PMMAs, acrylics, and thermoplastic down significantly. Um, I have been posting some of those jobs through the Roland user group on Facebook. If you're a part of that, um, you may have seen those. If you're not a part of it, uh, Roland Mill user group on Facebook, it's a great resource for troubleshooting, you know, new information that's out there, things that people are doing. Highly recommend that you join that. 
so keep an eye out for those posts. Going to be sharing new stuff again soon. So three times the gripping force. Again, we're going to be able to develop new strategies and grow into this machine over the next year or so. So we're, we're excited about what's coming. Uh, six disc automatic changer, as I've already mentioned, still a five axis mill. Uh, I will point out that the B axis in this machine is capable of 35 degrees, which is up from 30 in the previous 52 model. So greater angulation capabilities there. Uh, still a 15 tool changer. I will point out that the tool change uh, station is moved from the milling chamber up into its own compartment here in the top right. So everything's kept cleaner. There's not debris raining down on the, uh, the tooling itself. If we have debris on the end of the tool shank that goes into the collet, inside the collet, we're developing a buildup. So over time, that can create problems with your spindle or with your collet, which it could need to be replaced. So Overall, moving those into its own chamber, chamber is going to uh, preserve the life of the machine and any maintenance or repairs having to be done. Uh, we still have an automatic calibration capability. We also have a new manual calibration process that can be done through the V-Panel. So you can do your standard metal jig calibration, or you can go ahead with a more in-depth process, if you'd like to take it that far, and really fine-tune your device. Um, we have a remote monitoring system through uh, DG Shape Insights. There is a built-in web camera. If you create an account, you're able to access that from uh, your phone through the website, from a tablet at home, a computer at home, anywhere you can access the internet and you left your 53DC milling back at the office, you'd be able to log in remotely and check the status of a large job, whether it's a full arch zirconia or flexible RPDs, whatever you load into that machine overnight. On top of the remote monitoring capabilities, you're also going to be able to get notifications letting you know if something has gone wrong. We don't want a surprise in the morning when you walk in expecting six pucks to be milled and something occurred overnight. Okay. Again, we have the built-in ionizer to reduce any uh, static buildup to make it easier to clean the device itself. The machine does have uh, post-milling cleaning capabilities. So it's going to offer you three different options of fast, standard, or detailed cleaning. At the end of the job, it's going to run a grid pattern uh, over the puck, the milled puck itself, before it goes back into the changer to eliminate any milled debris from that surface area to prevent your changer area from becoming dirty, needing cleaning, needing maintenance, or needing repair. So you have control through the V-Panel of whether it's fast, simple, four passes over to eliminate debris, standard quality, or if you have the time to spare, uh, the high quality uh, milling operation. So fully up to the end user, which one they utilize. As always, uh, we offer a two year warranty with these machines, with any of our new devices. All you need to do is register through our site. So when you purchase a new machine, it's one year at the time it ships, but that second year of warranty is not activated until you go onto our website, enter the serial number in and put in your contact information. So you have a 60 day window from the time that it arrives on site to get that registered. So please don't forget, we don't want you to end up in a situation where you don't have coverage on a newer machine. So again, within 60 days, please make sure you register any device from us here, uh, DG Shape Americas. And we also have a included suction unit. So included in the price of the machine itself, you're also going to get a suction unit rolled in. Uh, we now have the option of choosing a BOFA or a Renfort unit. So it's completely up to the end user which one they prefer. Okay. Is it okay to launch our next question? Absolutely. Okay. So here we go. In your opinion, would lease, would lease, Leasing milling equipment makes sense for you. Either yes or no. Thank you so much for answering. Okay, continue here. Uh, next slide. So we talked about the development of new tooling. Okay. So currently we have these larger tools to offer for plastic, thermoplastic, or acrylic milling. So basically removables or appliances. Um, we have the three millimeter single fluted tool. tool. Uh, it's going to be the RSB150D-US. 
and that's available through Zon as, as a partner of ours. The mill also comes with a four millimeter roughing tool, which is uh, a dual fluted tool. It's a practical tool. The key benefit with the dual fluted tool is gonna be the preservation of your other tool's life, okay? So because it's dual fluted, it's taking smaller bites, which means it's not going to be as fast. But using that tool on your plastic jobs is going to allow you to extend the life of your other tool. Okay, it will be used on the roughing procedure. The three millimeter RSB 150D tool is single fluted because it's a single flute. It's gonna take a bite or a scoop out of that material with every pass. And that can reduce your milling times on PMMA, acrylic and thermoplastic by up to 35%. So significant time savings if you're going to go ahead and utilize the RSB 150D tool uh, on any appliances, flexible RPDs, night guards, um, sleep appliances, denture bases, anything out of PMMA would, would apply to that RSB 150D US tool. Okay, significant time savings there. We hope in the very near future to have um, more updated strategies, which will save you even more time. So we're excited about what's coming for that. And just to show you some of the milling time capabilities here, you uh, that you can realize with the use of that RSV tool. Uh, here we have on the, in the picture on the left, we have six 20 millimeter PMMA pucks that mill denture bases. We're able to complete all six from the moment the mill starts moving to this time, it completely stops in six hours and 49 minutes. So that means we're at roughly um, just under one hour and 10 minutes per denture base, which is significantly faster than we've be able, been able to do previously. In the middle image here, this is a VisiClear. So we have two flexible RPDs in a 20 millimeter disc, and we were able to mill these two items in an hour and 25 minutes. That's pretty quick. Uh, and again, here is another uh, RPD frame in a 20 millimeter. This single one was done in 44 minutes to completion. Okay. I mentioned before that I've been posting some things on social media, kind of giving the in and out of the mill, the time overview, the material choices. So I'll share a couple of those with you right now if you haven't seen them. Uh, just two weeks ago, I posted this one on the far left. In 42 minutes, I was able to mill a complete set of denture teeth, and that was out of uh, Harvest Temp Aesthetic, their PMMA, which is approved for five years as a denture tooth. So we have that here, 42 minutes using that three millimeter single flute tool. Here in the center, we milled this denture base out of the ever so popular, popular Lucitone 199 puck. So we were able to produce this in one hour and 36 minutes, and this was a 25 millimeter puck. So collectively, um, we were just under two and a half hours uh, for a complete milled denture. Now, the nice thing about a milled denture is the post-processing of it. Essentially, those two items, once they're cut out of the puck, are ready to be assembled with minimal post-processing. Uh, I'm gonna show here in a minute how I like to nest these to reduce the amount of post-processing that's required. And all the way on the right, I have another Harvest Temp Aesthetic puck here. So it has very nice translucency on the incisal side of the puck. Again, rated for five years of use as a denture tooth. We milled a complete monoblock denture in two hours and 10 minutes. So really nice detail, the anatomy's there. I'm not sure how well this will pick up via webinar. But, yeah, not too great. But I was able to take a light cure stain and glaze kit with this and uh, characterize, add some tobacco staining, some translucency to the incisal edge with some blues and grays, and then glaze it and it came out very, very nice. So nice workflow there if you're looking to apply pink to the gingiva area. So these are the, some of the capabilities we have with that new three millimeter tool. If you're milling, plastics, thermoplastics, acrylic pucks, uh, this is a great route to go. And as we've shown that Lucitone 199 puck mills very nicely uh, in, in the 53. So excited about the future and the new strategies to come.
So what do you need to utilize this new faster milling strategy, or as I like to call it, the boosted strategy with a 53? Obviously, first, you're going to need a 53 DC, and you're going to need that RSB 150D tool. In addition to that, you're going to need a set of ZPB tools. ZPB is a new specialty coded tool that will keep a sharp edge and last longer uh, from wear due to heat abrasion than standard carbide tools will. Okay, we're going to talk more about ZPB tools in the next slide here. So we're going to need a 53, the RSB tool, and a set of ZPB tools. You're also going to need to be up to date on your mailbox software. Okay, so once your license updated is updated, you need to download and install version 2023. Once you have that version, it'll give you the capability to go in and uh, and choose the ZPB Americas three millimeter strategy which will give you the strategies that I've just explained and also give you those, those same milling times. So I mentioned the ZPB tools in the previous slide. It has a diamond-like coating, so a DLC coating on there. That is one of the key features, again, extending the tool life. When you're milling these plastics, acrylics, or thermoplastics, you can see life's, lifetimes on your tooling of up to 80 hours, which is up from around you know, roughly 30 with carbide tooling. So significantly longer life. It also has a textured tool shank itself. So that grip force in the collet uh, is going to also have a mechanical grip, not just the grip applied, but that textured surface of the shank of the tool in the collet to prevent any slippage, which would result in a break. And the tools are five millimeters longer than standard carbide tools. So plastic jobs are typically thicker pucks, 20, 25, 30. So five millimeters of additional reach is gonna give you better detail on the CEJ and the interproximal region or any other, uh, any high detail areas that are deep inside of that puck, okay. So I talked about how we can simplify our post-processing with some of these plastic jobs. And I'm going to show you a couple images here. And I'm going to attempt to show you guys um, live in, in Millbox how I like to set up my supports for different plastics, whether it be an RPD, a denture base, or a full mono block to make it easy for me to remove and get that case right to the bench. So as I mentioned already, the first thing you have to do once you're up to date, you have your 53 and you have your correct tool. To utilize this strategy, you must choose America's ZPB three millimeter. Once you choose that here under this refresh button for your tool package, it's going to list the different tools, okay? So T stands for the tool slot and the number. Make sure each tool is in the proper slot, step one. And then once you've chosen your restoration, you've cho chosen the block, it's time to nest it, right? Set it up inside of the, of the block itself or the puck. And making the proper selections makes your job a lot easier here. So the red supports along the outside are going to be reduced significantly. And the green would be left whole. So at the end of the job, but when all the detail is completed, it's going to come in, it's going to reduce these supports and leave the interior ones whole to hold it into the puck, but make finishing this much easier. Um, most cases, what I like to do, and I'll see if I can shift this over for you guys after I go through this. This is how I would make the changes. Let's see how this runs live. Okay, so I can customize my supports. So here's a live denture. And when I click on a support, I'm going to have shape options for my supports. We have the standard round peg, which everybody is pretty familiar with from doing zirconia cases. We have a square, and then we have kind of a unique um, smaller support. And I'm not sure of the name of this exactly, but what this does when I move it is it changes how it's contoured. So when you have undercut areas, when I place it on that height of contour line that Millbox has, it's going to change the shape, change the flow of that support pin, making it your supports smaller and easier to work with. So the way I set these jobs up, 
I will apply half supports, so half reduced, they would be red on the interior here. I can change those by coming here. making my adjustments. So now my interior is set up, these four supports to be half milled, so semi cut halfway through. And then I would take my outside supports and make them fully cut. So once I take this puck out of the mill, and I have it in hand, instead of having to take a hand piece to it and cut every single one of these supports and make a mess, all I have to do is give a slight push. And these supports, the red supports that are half cut are gonna break away. Your restoration is gonna fall right out of the puck. It's right in the pan onto the bench for somebody to work on. So these supports are really nice. We just wanna show you how they move. If I can get this to cooperate without lag. So you see that it changes position and it will follow the contour of the actual design itself. So if you are doing removables with one of our devices or utilizing Millbox, uh, you're doing yourself a disservice by not utilizing these supports. I strongly encourage you play around with them and uh, get comfortable with them. They'll make a world of difference for removing your restorations uh, from the puck itself. And a few updates from our friends over at SIM. Uh, they have some new features in their latest versions. They have something new called the File Hub feature. You can find this information on their YouTube website. They have a nice video that explains it. It's a way to organize all of your STL files, uh, make changes for faster nesting, whether it's going to be material type, object type, group different uh, STLs together and drop them into a puck all at once. So. Uh, my explanation does not do it justice. I would strongly encourage you to go to their YouTube page or their site and explore new file hub. If you have a current version of Millbox, file hub is, is free. It's at no charge. So it is included with your license. It's a really nice feature to have great add on value. Um, customizable shortcuts is another option they have. So essentially what you're able to do to make your nesting workflow faster is generate your own hotkeys. So whether it's going to your um, STL file or your uh, making adjustments to your support pins or choosing your stocks. You can set up your own custom hotkeys to stay away from the mouse more and be able to operate more smoothly. They've also, uh, we've, we've seen a big increase of people interested in Powerball uh, or Rosen screw channel cases. So there is a new replace library available within Millbox that is going to allow you to choose these different sizes for these specialty cases and get more accurate, more accurate and more repeatable milling for those, those screw retain cases. So great stuff from our partners over at SIM constantly developing and making things better. Is it okay if we launch the next? And absolutely. Okay. Here we go, everybody. What is the most essential thing you consider when buying a new mill? You wouldn't mind answering. Thank you, folks. And last but not least, I'd just like to make everybody aware of our current offerings for our promotions. We do have a 52D trading program currently available through our dealer like Zon. You can contact their uh, very capable sales team to just explore those options. Nice thing about that, you can have one of our mills, a competitor mill. We are not going to take your mill out of your office. We simply need uh, serial number information for our own tracking and uh, you'd be able to utilize this promotion. We've also extended our service contract uh, promotion. So essentially it's buy two years and get one free. So if you're buying a new mill, you're receiving two years of coverage. You can buy two additional years and receive a free year, which gives you five years of full coverage. Within that five years, you're gonna get tech travel, parts, um, labor time, all covered under that warranty and you would receive four replacement spindles within that five-year time frame. So great value there, buy two, get one. Uh, the Zon team could certainly help you navigate that.
So with that, it, that is my time. I appreciate you all spending uh, a little bit of time with us this afternoon to review the product offering, what's new with the Plus Series models, as well as the 53. And uh, we're excited to see you all already in August, uh, LMT East. So uh, thank you all for spending the time and uh, logging on with us. And is it okay if we go over the poll uh, results? That'd be great. Let's do it. Okay, so for the first one, what would you like to mill in your DG Shape mill? And it seems like 75% say all on four with zirconia mm -hmm. and 25% say titanium bars. So how, what do you think about that? So all of our, all of our mills uh, have capability to produce zirconia all on four options. The 52D does utilize the C-clamp. It makes it unique. The DCI does not have that same feature. Um, the new 53 has what we call the open edge adapter. So it is a beveled edge holder with a gap. So it's going to allow for 90 degree like milling. So it's going to give you that same result of that C-clamp feature, but without having a completely open edge. The five degrees in the B um, plus that open edge, that beveled edge allows for full access to, again, the CEJ interproximal or tissue region of those all on four cases. As far as titanium goes, um, we do not currently have an offering for a titanium puck mill for those bar cases. The only titanium milling that we have available now is through the 42W with the AK1 kit. But, um, you know, if someone's looking for titanium, unfortunately, we don't have an option for that today. But there are materials out there that are becoming incredibly popular, uh, like Trilor, for instance, being used as a substructure. So if maybe you don't have the ability to afford a titanium mill at this point, exploring other material options with a mill you can't afford might be might be a better route. Okay, and the next question is, does leasing make sense? 40% say yes, and 60% say no. How do you feel about leasing? So I think leasing offers something different than we've seen before in the industry. Typically, you're buying something um, if you know outright, and then you are with that mill for the life of it, whether it's five, six, seven, eight years, whatever it might be before you upgrade. Leasing today is a fantastic option because technology is changing so quickly. What we're able to mill, the materials coming out, uh, every show you go to, you're seeing something you haven't seen before. So leasing gives you the capability to say, I want to move on or I want to buy out and stick with this machine. Or you can decide to trade up. You return that machine and you move on to the newest level of equipment from that manufacturer. So it kind of unlocks a door. There would be, you know, things like buyout at the end and, and things like that. But um, I believe our partners, you know, have come up with a leasing program that uh, that is attractive and, and does make sense in most cases. So doesn't mean it's wrong to buy. It's just another way of putting new equipment inside of your production. And the next question is, what uh, does our attendees feel most essential when thinking about purchasing a new mill? And service and support seems to be the most, 50%. Ease of use, 25%. And price is 25%. Yeah. So it doesn't surprise me. I mean, anytime on any social media outlet, anything to do with any CAD CAM technology, we very frequently see people just getting into CAD CAM the first time saying, hey, you know, I'm looking for a printer. I'm looking for a mill or an intraoral scanner. Uh, who would you recommend? And almost every comment below that will be go with whoever is going to have the best support. You know, people will make their suggestions, but support is very important. Um, we do have partnerships with companies across the U.S. who uh, offer repair options. So usually very quickly with our equipment, we can get somebody on site uh, as fast as possible. In most cases, faster than other manufacturers, manufacturers are able to. So uh, we recognize how important support is, how important service is, and um, we're constantly making changes to improve that. Uh, even here today over the past few weeks, you know, at, at uh, DGA, we're making changes to make things better. Thank you, Ian. We're gonna launch one more, and this is just for Zon. 
Um, but I just want to let everybody know what's coming up next on Zon Academy. We have our next webinar that's 816 next week, and that's how to enhance your profitability with desk components with Daniel Alter. And our 3D printing road shows are coming to a city near you next week on August 18th will be in Mesa, Arizona. September 29th will be in Kansas City, Missouri. October 13th, Orlando, Florida. October 27th will be at Long Island, New York. November 3rd will be in Atlanta. November 17th, Tacoma, Washington. And December 1st will be in Fort Lauderdale, Florida. So if you would, if you're in the area, please go to Zon Academy, go to the education and the events page will take you to an event fright and you could sign up right there for any of those shows. Um, if you're thinking about getting a new mill, we have some great financing options for you like Route 66. Route 66 offers uh, no payments for six months. So you can get a new mill right into your laboratory and not have to worry about making any payments for six months and get that mill working for you. Like I said, before any payments have to be made. So that's a good option. Um, and I'd like to thank you all for joining us here on Zon Academy. And I hope to see you next week um, with the webinar on desk components. And Ian, thank you so much for joining us. No um, if there's any questions, you could type them in right now. Ian, did you have any questions? Sure. Come through. No. Yeah, if you guys use the, the Q&A section, if you do have anything, you could type something in there now. Um, we do have one in there already asking about the difference between the ZRB and the RSB tools. The ZRB tool is a dual fluted tool. So it's a three millimeter, du three millimeter dual fluted tool. Again, it's going to take smaller bites because there's two cutting blades and it's going to generate slightly more heat. So we can't push the aggressiveness of that strategy. The RSB is the same size in three millimeters, but because it's single fluted, the mouth or the channel of that tool is going to be able to take bigger bites of the material. And that single bite is also going to generate less heat on that material. So we're able to be slightly more aggressive with that strategy. Um, so that's the real difference between the two, but the RSB tool will provide you faster milling results for sure than the, than the ZRB.